my new page. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. <laughs> Michael. Hi. He moved kind of back here from Chicago because he's having a quarter life crisis. So, <laughs> what can you do? Well, I made him read The Lightning Struck Heart by TJ Klune, and I said that we should talk about it on video. And we decided we were going to attempt to make a makeup look off of this. So, start. let's jump in. <laughs> Ew. Then I'm going to do my eyebrows. Is that what people do now? People do eyebrows first now? Don't they? What? But you're gonna put makeup on around them. Or maybe that's Dude, the I point. I don't even know how people do them anymore. We're not cool anymore. We used to watch all the makeup videos and we were like very, very on trend. And now we're just like very old, we're old people. We're old. We're like almost 30. So Lightning Struck Heart follows Sam of Wild and he is a young wizard. Throughout the book he goes on like a thousand different adventures, right? Mm -hmm. And the main adventure that he has to go on is to uh, save a prince who has been kidnapped by a dragon. So he, his best friend, who is a gay hornless unicorn, and his other best friend, who is a half giant, go on this adventure along with knight Ryan Foxheart, who Sam has a crush on. But Ryan is engaged to the prince. So on this journey, it's Sam trying to like fight off his feelings for Ryan and trying to do the right thing because he wants Ryan and Justin, the prince, to end up together. But there are a lot of adventures along the way. They run into a bunch of dark wizards and fairies and so it's a lot of adventure and humor and it is very explicit. Lots of sex talk. Constantly. Like if you are not one for reading about sex or anything sexual or vulgarity, if that's a word. Stay far away. Very far away. Because this is non-stop. You can't go a paragraph without there being an innuendo mm -hmm. or some sort of joke. But the way I've been trying to explain it, like I told you, I feel like it gives off Shrek vibes, but like R-rated Shrek. There's no ogres in this one, but just like the humor in it and how it's always just so campy. Yeah, very campy, very kitschy. <laughs> it's yeah. just very Shrek vibes for me. And it's like Shrek being kind of like Sam and then Gary the Unicorn being like Donkey. Donkey. Mm -hmm. They have that back and forth. It's very, if you like Shrek and you enjoy sex, if you like, if you want sexy Shrek, I would recommend this book for you. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that would be the apt summary of mm -hmm. this one. Well, your look might even turn out better than mine because I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea what... Don't say that. You're <laughs> cursing me. Okay. Do um... we want to talk about the characters? Yeah, we can have like a character breakdown maybe. So we have Sam, who is our boy wizard. Apprentice. Apprentice. Apprentice, Apprentice to the wizard. king's wizard. Yes, so his goal is to become the king's wizard eventually, but wizards have like a prolonged lifespan, so it's gonna be years until he'll become wizard, but he is the mentee to Morgan of Shadows, mm -hmm. who is the king's wizard. And you said he's one of your favorite characters, right? Yeah, so Morgan, okay, so picture the book that shall not be named. Picture Albus, but way better. <laughs> like a great father figure yeah so much fun but like older big like merlin the wizard uh but super open-minded asexual yeah they have like a really like a bond almost like parent and child i would say yeah. and that's something i noticed about this book too that there are so many father figures to sam like that's a big theme throughout a lot of tj clune's books so there's morgan but then there's also sam's parents that he has and then gary the Hornless gay unicorn is also much older than Sam too, who is yeah. also kind of acting as a father figure. So I feel like there's just a lot of parental people in this, which I feel like for a book about like the chosen one trope, it's interesting to have so many parents when a lot of people who write chosen one tropes like kill off all of their parents. Exactly. And it's almost Sam is even stronger because of all of his loved ones and their connections, yeah. which I think is really rare in a book with it. Because when you read through it, you can find out really quickly that Sam is very powerful. So it very much is that chosen one trope. Yeah. But yeah, everyone just in his life makes him even stronger. You're going to see a lot of healthy relationships, I would say, as yeah. well. Like these, this isn't a book where like there's an abusive father or an, you know, yeah. an abusive boyfriend. This is people that care about one another. It's like almost a story they, of love. They communicate when there's something that's upsetting them. They're like actually talking it out. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm mad at you because you did this to me. So let's move forward. Yeah, good communication techniques. Yeah, unlike me in my life personally. <laughs> 
So we have Sam, we have Morgan, and then Gary and Tiggy are the two best friends that he finds like when he's younger. So when he's a very young wizard, he's sent out by Morgan to go and find something unexpected. Unexpected right? in the dark woods. Yeah, the dark woods, dark forest. So he goes out and he comes back with a hornless gay unicorn and a half giant friend. And I think their friendship is like one of the cutest friendships. So I kind of picture Gary as Blanche Devereaux from The Golden Girls. Okay. Um, but like very sexual. Um, I've listened to the audiobook of it. So I think my character understanding of it is slightly different than hers. But in the audiobook, if you guys listen to it, I'd really recommend it. The guy that I think his name is, I can't remember his name. But he does such a great job acting on all the characters. And he gives um, Gary this sassy southern like very aff like affected gay voice, which is perfect for the character. I really enjoyed him. Um, and then we have Tiggy. Oh, I love Tiggy. He's probably my favorite. Really? I Why? Love him. He's just so sweet. And he's so innocent, but not at the same time. Like I think, I don't know if it explains it in the first book, that he talks a little bit different than everybody else, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't understand like what's going on. He's so funny and he gets everybody's jokes and then he's just always like, oh, why is it not me who gets to have adventures? Why is it always Sam? And he's just so protective too. He's like a big, yeah, like he's, he is a big teddy bear. Yeah, his big thing is always like, do I need to smash anyone? But he doesn't say like, he's like, Tiggy smash. And it's like, well, tell him yes or no, cause he'll do it. I don't, I just think he's so precious. And then we have the prince. Justin. Prince Justin. Who, he doesn't really show up a lot in the first book, but he is kind of, I guess, arrogant in a way. And he's very jealous of Sam. So their relationship isn't great throughout. And Sam's like reluctantly going to save Justin. He's kind of like, I would let him be abducted by this dragon. Who cares? But eventually they get to talking. I don't know if they really have a strong friendship at the end of the first book. Okay. So after we have Justin, who is just kind of like mm, arrogant, he's a prince. He's always had his way. We have his fiance, Ryan, Knight Commander, Ryan Foxart. Yes. What are your feelings towards Ryan? So Ryan is kind of your typical, I would say typical Prince Charming. He's everything growing up as someone that if you were really into fairy tales and you wanted to be that person that would get someone to come save you, that type of thing, he's the guy that you were picturing. He's depicted as being so attractive, so nice, so kind, yeah, kind of kinda like, like the, the per yeah, the like per human embodiment of the perf like the perfected male. Do we have any more characters? We have his parents. Yeah, briefly touched on them. They're super loving, super yeah. considerate, um, very supportive of him. Just being kind of chaotic. We've talked about this. If you've read the ex Extraordinaries, I always want to say Extraordinaries. <laughs> if you've read the Extraordinaries by TJ Klune, he is, Sam is a very similar character to Nick in the Extraordinaries. They have very similar like ADHD, can't pay attention. Says what's exactly what's on their yeah. mind, but such a kind, kind heart. And I think that's something like that he really touches on. Like if when you read Sam through the book. Sam is so pure. Yes. He just cares so much for everybody. He's just always wanting to do what's great for all everyone out there mm -hmm. and he's just so sweet I love Sam he's really sweet oh I have to be careful Paige I am a boy <laughs> that does not have a lot of eyelid space so this is midpoint check-in <laughs> it looks like makeup it looks like makeup I just I, I worry you look like a peacock kind of <laughs> <laughs> all right so we haven't really talked about writing style you've now read three TJ Klune books right yes three what do you think about his writing style? So I've read Wolf Song, The Extraordinaries, and now The Lightning Struck Heart. Mm -hmm. And I want to preface my opinion being that I love his writing style. I think it's, I mean, it's really, as someone who I think also thinks a bit sporadically, having a main character like Sam that kind of has a similar kind of, ooh, what's over there type of yeah. mindset I find I don't know something I can connect to really easily so mm -hmm. I love his writing style oh, um I'm, I'm getting brushes <laughs> yeah <laughs> but one thing that I've noticed is that he uses similar plots and similar characterizations throughout all of his stories if so if you like one of his books yeah. you're gonna like the other ones this is kind of like the extraordinaries instead of being superheroes we're in a fairy tale wizard universe yeah family is huge in these books like and I think it almost I haven't read all of his stories you've read a lot more yeah and even in the house in the cerulean sea like fatherhood is a really big thing and I 
think that I feel like that's really important especially in like queer books that there is a father figure because I feel like a lot of the times it's either like they have a like a strained relationship with their father because like because they, they're gay yeah. or because they're queer or something like that and that's not something that you really find I think in TJ Clue's yeah. books it's certainly not in this one or any of the ones no, I've read like, it is what it is and it was so refreshing like especially me as a gay man to read a book that has so many gay characters or male characters identify as homosexual or just any sort of person that isn't just kind of heterosexual to see that it wasn't a big deal I don't know it's quite impactful to me and I know growing up I mean I'm 27 now but if I was a little kid and I could see oh look Sam is this powerful gay wizard yeah and it's you're not thinking of him as being a gay wizard you're thinking of him just being a wizard who happens to be gay yeah just like a really funny person who's trying to be a wizard someday and like really failing at it a lot of the time yeah. and then sometimes getting it right and just somebody who's in love with somebody else too. It's just nice to be able to see those people represented. The one thing though that I don't feel represented in for his books is oh that there's gosh. no girls. Like, are very limited females in his stories. Very few. But the ones that he does write are really good. He writes mother figures really well and he writes usually the best friend or some friend within the group is a female so he doesn't have a lot of girls in them but when he does i really do like how he writes them especially in house in the cerulean sea you haven't read that one but there's like a mother figure in it and there's also some of the kids are girls none in a lot of his other books are no, I'm trying to think in this in the first book i know for sure we meet the mom. queen and his mom yeah the oh, and we only hear about the queen yeah and then then his mother mm -hmm. And that's it. Yeah, I would like really love to meet TJ Clue. I know. Yeah, he seems like a really cool guy. I know. All right, what did you dislike about this book, if anything? Oh gosh. I what? think the one thing I told you towards the end, there's an issue with Sam and Justin. Justin says something that I kind of found a little bit unforgivable, and then I didn't love the ending of this book. I felt like. Some things were very predictable in how it played out, but I wish that it hadn't been so predictable how things were resolved. And I felt like I didn't have time to trust one of the characters in making like the best decision. I don't know how to say that without spoilers, but I felt like the ending yeah, the, could have been The different. ending, I was happy that it happened, but I wish it didn't happen in the exact way that it happened. Exactly. Just because it made you kind of second guess some of the characters' uh, morals, Yeah. maybe? Yeah. That type of morals and how they kind of view others, that was like my biggest problem with it, I would say, with that, was just the ending. But then, the last chapter is very exciting. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. Every, explicit. This is an explicit book. If yes. you don't like anything explicit and you don't like male, male sexual scenes, then this is not the book for you because they are descriptive. Graphic. Just, yeah. But in a great way. Go away, too much nose contour. What is going on with my nose? This is not my nose. Paige, did you get rhinoplasty? No, you did. Shh, don't say that on camera. <laughs> I'm joking. So there are a few things in the book that I feel like people aren't going to appreciate as much. That would be the explicit, explicit scenes. So there's a lot of graphic violence that's just kind of like blase. Mm -hmm. And then there's the fact that Sam's mother is from a, a group of people who are referred to as gypsies in this. And it wasn't said in an insulting way. It is just like their culture, that community, that magical group that is referred to as that. So it is like their race. So it's not said in a derogatory way, but using that word, I'm not sure if people will enjoy that part of the book. So that is something to look out for and know if you're going to pick up this book. Do I attempt lashes? I don't even know if I have a lash glue anymore. And if I do, it's probably nasty. Oh no, that's okay. We will blend out. Okay, I need to do some lashes. All right, so these are the looks. We tried. I tried. And you did actually much better than you usually do on yeah, makeup. Yeah, <laughs> this, if you think this is bad, know that it's usually much worse. <laughs> I feel like mine looks presentable. Yours looks really good. I feel like I need better lashes with this though. <laughs> Alright, so of the TJ Klum books that you've read, where does this rank? So I've read three. So I've read this one, Wolf Song, and... Extraordinaries. And Extraordinaries. And I think this is actually number one for me. Okay, and then? The Extraordinaries, and then Wolf Song. I think for me, it's House in Cerulean Sea. Mm. 
then I think it might be this one. Yeah. Then Wolf Song and the rest of the Green Creek series and then Extraordinaries. Mm -hmm. so, really? I think Interesting. so. Yeah, you loved the Wolf Song. I love those books. Yeah. What did you rate this? Out of five? Mm -hmm. Honestly, they just said so much that I love about it and the sexual humor and everything is something I know it sounds so stupid But it's something that made me enjoy it so I much feel like more. It's our type of humor. Like that's the way we joke with each other too. Yeah. So it, like so I honestly, know. I'm going like at least four to like four and a half. Yeah, I really, really like it. Four and a it. half. And like looking back, I think I might even be five stars on this one just because it's so fun. And I keep thinking about it. Like this whole series put me in a major book hangover. Like mm. I haven't wanted to read anything, but like I've been forcing myself to try and get through things. But I just want to live in this world. It's just so much fun. So funny. I really like it. Yeah, and it's so sweet. Yeah, like you said, I wish I could like live in that world right. and be a wizard or just be Sam's friend. I know. I just want to be their friend. Thank you for being on video with me. And if you think that we should do any more reviews this way, trying to recreate <laughs> book covers out of makeup, let us know and tell me who did the better makeup look. I mean, yeah. obviously him. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching. I will see you later. Bye. Ooh. I think I might try and copy. I think I have it in my brain how she did her makeup in one video that I like. The lady who talks about crime. You said that whole sentence backwards. <laughs> oh, this is looking cute. Hmm? Oh my god, I sound like Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I told you! Oh my god, we both did the literal same page, like head tilt, like, ah!